Bulgaria did not take part in the Axis invasion of Yugoslavia and German invasion of Greece. However, did you know that Bulgaria did take part as an Axis power in the occupation of parts of Greece and parts of the now dismembered Kingdom of Yugoslavia? This here will be the story about the Bulgarian occupation of parts of Yugoslavia. Keep watching. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you are new, my name is Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher and I like to cover history, preferably on location. I'm right now in Skopje, the capital of North Macedonia. If you find it interesting as well, well, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. To understand why Bulgaria annexed a part of Yugoslavia in the first place, we need to look at Bulgaria's role in the early 20th century. The country was involved in three wars, the First and Second Balkan War and the First World War. During the First Balkan War, Bulgaria, Greece, Serbia and Montenegro teamed up against the Ottoman Empire and proclaimed victory. The Second Balkan War was a conflict which broke out when Bulgaria, dissatisfied with its share of the spoils of the First Balkan War, fought against Serbia, Romania, Greece, Montenegro and the Ottoman Empire. Bulgaria lost. During the First World War, Bulgaria allied itself with the Central Powers. It once again led to defeat. Bulgaria joined the Axis Powers early March 1941. In the following month, on the 6th of April, Germany invaded both Yugoslavia and Greece. Both invasions I covered in the past. See description for the links on just that. Although Germany launched its invasions from Bulgaria, Bulgaria itself did not join the invasions. Yet, they did take part in the occupation of parts of the two countries. The Yugoslav region that was occupied by Bulgaria is the largest part of what is today the country of North Macedonia. A smaller part in the west came under Italian influence and a part of Serbia. During the interwar years, the region was referred to as Vardar Banata or Vardar Banovina. Now, in literature, it's referred to as Vardar Macedonia or just Macedonia. Now, this here angers Greek people because you must be aware that Macedonia is a much larger geographical region with areas in Bulgaria, Kosovo, Albania, but the bulk of Macedonia is located in Greece. Some Greek people argue that Macedonians cannot be Slavic people. So therefore, Slavo-Macedonians or North Macedonians is simply a wrong name. I do refer to them as such in this video because what else do I have to call them? People with roots from probably Bulgaria, Serbia that pretend to be Macedonians. I mean, that's a whole mouthful. I use these words you see right here. I hope you understand. When the Germans marched into the region, they were greeted as liberated by the local population. During the interwar years, policies of Serbanization were implemented, much to the dismay of the population. Administrative brutality, Serbian chauvinism, political corruption and economic exploitation were more flagrant in Yugoslav Macedonia than in any other part of Yugoslavia. When the Germans arrived, pro-Bulgarian Yugoslav Macedonians raised banners with one people, one czar, one kingdom. On April 19, 1941, the Bulgarian army entered the region and they were very much welcomed as well. Without making any formal proclamation, it simply extended Bulgarian military, administrative, police and judicial organization and legislation to these regions though it did issue a number of specific laws and decrees applicable to them. Bulgarian legislation was simply extended in the newly taken territories. The Bulgarian government took over all the property that had formerly belonged to the Yugoslav state, except for the assets retained by the Germans. The Bulgarian 5th Army took over the region. A force of about 40,000 was kept in the region. Early 1943, with partisan activity increasing, another division was brought in. For administrative purposes, the annexed area was divided into two districts, Skopje and Bitola, each under a district director. The police too were territorially organized, though police chiefs were independent of administrative directors. The annexed areas of Kosovo and southeast Serbia, which the Bulgarians claimed were populated by Morova Valley Bulgarians, were attached to other administrative districts and put under other Bulgarian troops, but a part of that the same policies were applied in these regions. After initial joy, there was disappointment. See, Serbian officials that run things here in interwar Yugoslavia, they were simply replaced by Bulgarian officials 
which often were not the best ones. During the interwar period, the people here were told, you are Serbs. Now they were told, you are Bulgarians. From Sofia, everything was decided. And the Bulgarians did make an effort to transform this region into a part of a greater Bulgaria. The Bulgarian government saw the region as rightfully Bulgarian. However, instead of liberators, they acted like conquerors, harsh and rude to the local population. Yugoslav Macedonians were treated as backward Bulgarians. The Bulgarians realized only a part of the population saw themselves as Bulgarian. Education had to facilitate the process of Bulgarization. Local teachers deemed suitable were sent to Bulgaria for a year of study and indoctrination. The new curriculum in the North Macedonian schools strongly emphasized Bulgarian topics and discouraged the use of the Slavo-Macedonian language which the Bulgarian authorities regarded, rightly or wrongly, as only a dialect of Bulgarian. A typical weekly schedule included seven hours of Bulgarian, three hours of Bulgarian history and one hour of Bulgarian church history. The Bulgarians did implement laws for tax relief and economic assistance. 800 new schools were established and Skopje was presented with a library, a museum, a national theater and a university. The Bulgarians also assumed control over the Orthodox churches in the area. In 1942, Bulgarian citizenship was imposed on the people and those who refused would be required to leave the country. Those who accepted Bulgarian citizenship were promised tax exemption. It did lead to the expulsion of Serbs and Montenegrins. And around 26,000 left for German-occupied Serbia. Resistance occurred and as a result of that, the Bulgarians applied draconic measures. People were rounded up, imprisoned, had to perform forced labor or were deported to Bulgaria. A special type of Bulgarian counter unit was developed but with little success. What happened to the Jews in this region? As you may know, Bulgaria did not hand over its Jewish population to the Germans. But this was unfortunately not the case for the Jews living in the occupied territories of Bulgaria. The Bulgarian government took care of the roundup and deportation of an estimated 7,000 Jews from Skopje and Bitola. Inside German-occupied Serbia, the Bulgarians did assist the Germans with maintaining order. Initially, Hitler envisioned their role to be small, but later that year, German leaders wanted the Bulgarians to police a large part of Serbia in order to move German-occupying forces to the Eastern Front. They arranged Bulgarian troops to occupy about 40% of Serbia proper. They were put under German command. The principal task of the Bulgarian troops was to safeguard the railroads, main highways and main industrial enterprises, mines and supply centers. Administration was done by the collaborating Serbian state authorities and political control was done by the Germans. As said, the Bulgarians in Serbia proper were under full German command. The area in which the Bulgarians served as occupation troops was expanded on two later occasions, January and July 1943, bringing them in control of 80% of Serbia proper, excluding the Banat. Relations between Bulgarian troops and the Serb population were strained, as many Serbs had not forgotten the Bulgarian occupation of World War I. In the closing days of the pro-Axis Bulgarian regime, late summer 1944, both Germans and Chetniks started to disarm Bulgarian forces. Other Bulgarian forces soon left. In September 1944, the Bulgarians switched sides. Now the Germans, they wanted to establish a pro-Nazi puppet state. Now that is a story for another episode. There is much more about the topic of North Macedonia during the Second World War. Feel free to add any information you have found in the comments below. I want to give a shout out to my patrons and especially to this guy who has an amazing Instagram channel. He provided me with some of the pictures for this video. Thank you so much. If you like to learn about the Italian occupation of parts of Yugoslavia, you can click right here. And if you like to learn about the Bulgarian occupation of parts of Greece, you can click right here. I want to thank you for watching and best wishes from Skopje, North Macedonia.